will. What you're seeking is a blessing from God. You must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today Live. Randy Robinson here, and uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get brainwashed. It's a good thing if you do it the right way. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about renewing our minds daily. What does that look like, and what impact does that have on our lives? We're gonna talk about it. Hello, Judy. Hello, everyone else who's watching us live. Be a part of the conversation. It'll be fun because I know. My guest is, is he's kind of just a fun guy. His name is Manny Arango, uh, and we recently had him on the broadcast show, and so I've gotten a, a chance to speak with him and, and talk through some of this material. Uh, he has Manny Arango Ministries just recently in uh, 2022, relocated to the great state of Texas. So we the great country of Texas. The great, well, we were our own republic, but now we, uh, we joined the, the uh, yeah, United States. But we welcome him down here as we welcome all, especially uh, quality people like Manny. His book is called Brainwashed, uh, but we're going to talk about the toxic thoughts. We're going to talk about taking control of your mind in a healthy way because as we're seeing an increase uh, today, people are having trouble and it's it's all right up here uh, and it, it has really bad consequences um, oftentimes and it, it it, at the very least, will just hold you back from all that God wants for you. So we're going to dig into the into the brain. We're going to have a good one, Manny. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, how how's your how's your brain today? My brain <laughs> is good today. My brain's good today, especially because I gave it a day off yesterday. So, uh, well, I, okay, you know what? That's a biblical thing. Rest, and I think oh, the, yeah. part of the rest is not just for the you know the arms and legs. It's for the it's for the mind. Oh, it is totally for the mind. You know, fatigue sometimes can lead us to can. Let me just be frank Can lead to sin. You know, like fatigue can lead to you not being able to make decisions as sharply as you would have made. And and I don't know if you've ever seen this, but uh, there are times where people will will doctors or, you know, people who kind of really know what's going on up here medically will compare, you know, the effect of alcohol and the effect of fatigue on our decision-making skills. And uh, the Bible says Samson got into all types of trouble because he didn't know how to grieve properly. And he didn't know how to rest. Hmm. Um, and so we may just assume, oh, it's a lust issue. But at least for one biblical character named Samson, it seemed to be more than just a lust issue. That seemed to be the fruit issue. But at the root of the issue, uh, you know, he, he, he rested with Delilah when he shouldn't have and uh, and he didn't know how to grieve over the loss of his first wife. And that led to a whole bunch of, you know, nasty, crazy, you know, uh, consequences. So rest yeah. it is important. It is important. Yeah. You want to hear a really lame, terrible joke now that you bring up? Of course I do. Of course you know, I do. You know, the first uh, comedian, a stand up comedian in the Bible was it was it was Samson because he brought the house down. <laughs> I apologize on the air for that indiscretion. I must be tired and lapsing in judgment, and my brain's not functioning properly. Because, <laughs> but you know, some of you guys are going to repeat that joke. You're going to be telling that across. It's a good one. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's it's as it's good as long as you preface it by saying, "Hey, I've got a really corny Bible joke for you." <laughs> okay, but back on topic. Uh, what? How come? I mean, typically, you know, they they tell you if you're going to write a book, write what you know. You know, uh, yeah. if we write from our experience, especially in these types of books, what, uh, what got you to the point where you're like, man, my mind's getting away from me. I gotta, I gotta do something here. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I grew up what I would call a pretty toxic environment. You know, the book is about taking toxic thoughts captive. And my father, my biological father took me to a crack house for the first time when I was five years old. My dad was incarcerated for 18 years. My mom was pregnant. Had my older sister when she was 13. Um, all of my, two of my aunts are prostitutes. Most of my uncles are either incarcerated or drug addicted or alcoholics. And so I grew up in a, in a toxic environment. And that toxic environment created victim mentality, poverty mentality, created all kinds of negative mental strongholds. By the time I was 25, I'd given my life to Jesus. I was a Christian. I'd been a Christian for a while, but man, I was depressed. I was anxious. 
I was suicidal. I was uh, addicted to pornography. I was, um, I, I, my mind just was was a was a war zone. Mm. And um, I'd given my my spirit to to the lordship of Jesus, um, but man, the 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 mind takes time. Right, we're saved in a moment; it happens instantly, you know. But the process of sanctification really led me to needing to seek out some 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 mental health you know professionals and so i remember getting into therapy for the very first time i didn't even want to be there you know <laughs> but, you know i could hear my father's you know my dad who who had kind of raised me in a toxic way i could hear him in my head saying strong men don't need to talk to anybody about their problems mm. you know this is a sign of weakness and it's funny how the same people who kind of got you sick can keep you sick, you know? <laughs> and um, and I, I remember just waiting in the waiting room and right when I was about to leave, man, the this therapist, you know, walks out and says, hey, it's time for us to to talk. Let's come into my office. And um, it was the first day of of a journey for me that that changed me and marked me as a Christian therapist, you know, hardcore believer. And he helped me to just navigate my mind. And I mean, I, I forgave my father, overcame victim mentality, overcame poverty mentality. I started thinking different. I started thinking about what I was even thinking about. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of times we're just thinking and we're not questioning what we're thinking about. We're not challenging what we're thinking about. And um, oh my gosh, over the next nine months, I mean, this therapist gave me the tools that I needed to really manage this thing called my mind, right? So think about it, you know, in order to operate a vehicle, we need a driver's license in order to operate, you know, we wouldn't go to a barber unless they had a license. We wouldn't, you know, there's, you know, there's equipment in here, you know, mics and cameras and stuff, but there's someone on my team that knows how to operate this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But the most important machinery we got is right up here. And a lot of us don't really know how to operate it. It's not like it's intuitive. We actually have to be taught how to operate it. And I remember, um, you know, I was a Christian, but man, I was really bad at operating this machinery up here. Mm. And so uh, life is about stewardship. We're owners of nothing, stewards of everything. And so I'm steward of, I'm a steward of every breath I breathe. I'm a steward of my physical body. I'm a steward of money, you know, resources, but I'm a steward of my mind. Mm. And I have to steward this thing. And it could bring, you know, it could bring blessings. It can bring creativity it can it can be in a, a source of imagination that sets other people free i can get sermons out of this and songs out of this and you know there's all types of awesome stuff that this mind can produce which is why the enemy wants to hijack it mm -hmm. he wants to hijack it because it's so valuable um it is what sets us apart yeah. um and so uh I, I began to go on this journey and then pastorally i was a, a i was in pastoral ministry for about 10 years and i began to realize Everyone I talked to had some kind of negative thought pattern, uh, whether it's unforgiveness, right, which is a thought pattern, whether it's memories that were traumatic that, you know, you keep getting triggered by or memories that were pleasurable. And so now you keep going back to sin. So your memories is a part of your mind, you know, I, I, like, man, every whether it's anxiety and inability to sleep, everyone I began to talk to. It's almost like I began to realize, oh my goodness, you are a Christian, but you don't have the mind of Christ. Hmm. You still have the mind of Adam and you have it you, that, that we've got to create some kind of resource to help you to renew your mind and not just feel guilty because you're not renewing your mind, <laughs> right? Sometimes we hear right, right. things in church about renewing your mind and everyone's like, yeah, sign me up for that. But then it gets into, well, how do we actually do that? What is what is what are the practical steps? Yep. And so I wrote a book to really give people practical handles for how to do that. By the way, I, I used your mind of Adam, mind of Christ analogy with sort of new wine, old wine, because I, I found it from our discussions on the broadcast show. Yeah. Really poignant how as Christians we accept we expect people who are not Christians to understand what we're talking about. Uh, and, and a lot of times we are, we are putting Christ ideas into the mind of Adam and it just, yeah. it's just, it's a miss. And so we have to oh, learn yeah. how to communicate on their level. Just a side They're note. They're not compatible. They're not compatible. Right. Right. And what you're talking about is more 
in dealing with yourself uh, and, and, you know, again, renewing, getting rid of the old thought patterns. Literally, we know scientifically now. It's funny. So I love how God is so far ahead of science and he tells us things. And then we find out later, oh, that's scientifically proven. <laughs> and it's like yeah. it was true before you ever <laughs> figured that out. And yeah. It was in God's yeah. word. But, yeah, that, that idea of of, you know, in scientific terms, re creating neural pathways so that our thought literally our brain takes a different way to get to something yeah you ran across some things uh obviously the forgiveness addictions uh, victim mentality uh, is an important one um and and how you overcame these walk go back a little bit and from that moment you first sat down with the christian therapist until you know where you're at now which I think you would admit is not a 100%, but still a journey, a daily For thing. sure. Mm -hmm. And it's good It's good to acknowledge that because that's where we're all at. Um, what were some of the uh, significant ideas and or actions that start, started putting you headed in the right direction? That's huge. I, I'll tell you one that was, was massive. Uh, I'll, I'll give you two. The first was was me figuring out what insecurities are. So I, I would say that, man, I struggled with insecurities, man, middle school, high school, college, um, that, you know, when you when you don't necessarily have a father to validate your masculinity, to validate who you are, to give you identity, um, the 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 inevitable consequence is that you're going to walk in insecurity. And so my therapist gave me this really, really helpful tool. He said, imagine, Manny, imagine we're in a dark room. And I said, hey, we're just going to gather up this darkness and we got to get the dark, you know, into these trash bags. He said, that would be ridiculous, right? He said, because darkness, um, like insecurities, is not a material substance. It is the absence of a material substance. He said, you don't need to focus on your insecurities. You actually need to focus on receiving identity hmm. because once identity is there, it's the same as light. Identity and light are both material substance. Light is actually a thing. Darkness is just the absence of light. Hmm. Identity is real. Ident when, G when God says, this is my son and who I'm well pleased, it's a moment of identity. It's hmm. a, when, when we begin to acknowledge Man, I'm made in the image of God. I'm the righteousness of God. And I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. These are moments of identity. And those moments are the things that make insecurities dissipate, disappear. So, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like I've I've heard this said a lot in church. It's it's factually true, but it's really good for this. It's like, you know, when when people who work for, you know, the the um a national bank or or the Fed, you know, are trying to figure out how to teach others to spot counterfeit money. They don't spend time looking at counterfeit money. They spend time looking at real currency mm -hmm. yeah. because when you spend time with the truth, you inevitably begin to detect lies. Mm -hmm. And so I, be, I, I had put all this energy into, man, praying against my insecurities and rebuking insecurities and <laughs> not, not focusing on insecurities. And my my therapist literally just go okay great you're 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 you got great intentions but tell me who you are who is manny mm -hmm. i remember going i don't know <laughs> he said yep until you can confidently and with um conviction answer that question you'll always be rebuking <laughs> insecurities mm -hmm. and casting out insecurities and let's not focus on gathering up darkness let's just turn the lights on that was a massive moment for me that's good uh, i remember you know going out to my car after the session i had a notebook and i just said god what do you think about me the therapist gave me this language ask god about your original design hmm. not not what life has done not what your family has done but your original design um, because what, we're, what we want to do when it comes to your identity is to restore factory settings. We got to get you back 
to whatever God's original design was for you. You're more than a preacher. You're more than a communicator. You're more than your job. You're, you, that stuff's not your identity. That stuff flows out of your identity. But just who are you? Man, God's given you a spirit of optimism. God's given, like, wh who are you? You'll never know how to market yourself or create wealth for yourself or you, you'll, you, you'll never. And then what happens is we take good things, like let's say our purpose. And if we don't have our identity, our purpose then becomes our identity. Yeah. So your purpose is great. Your purpose is a good thing. But now it, my purpose is good as long as it's my purpose. My purpose is bad when it becomes my identity. Um, and so figuring out that was was a game changer with with my therapist. The second one was just gratitude, like practicing gratitude. Um, can, can I yeah, interrupt you? Because I want to spend more time on that point, and it's an important one. But there's something I want to tell you. Last weekend, my my wife was watching uh, television in our the main room, not where I usually watch television. And I'm like, the subwoofer's not on. She's like, mm -hmm. the what's not what? And I'm like, the sound bar is not connected to the subwoofer. Dude, I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out what button to push yeah. to get these connected. And I'm on the remote. Nothing was working right. Finally... I, I went online, I searched, I found like a little user manual. It turns out where there's a factory reset button that you have to get a, a, a paper clip or something. And yeah, yeah. Out, right? And I'm like, I would, and you have to turn the sound bar off and hold down the mute button with the sound bar off yeah. to get it to connect the sound bar to the, to the thing. I would have never figured that out on my own. Exactly. Never, exactly. ever. And when you talk about having to do a factory reset and say, God, who am I? And connect to God again. So many of us, we don't want to read the instruction book on that. No, 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 no. So I actually talk right about this in chapter one of okay. Brainwash. The analogy that I use is, um, you know, one time my wife, you know, she shattered the, the screen on her iPhone. Yeah. And, uh, well, there was this guy at church who was like, hey, you give me 50 bucks, I'll fix it. And uh, we, we were like, sure, you know, gave him 50 bucks. He fixed it. Well, then it came time, you know, to turn in my wife's phone uh, to, to get a new phone. And, of course, Apple goes, someone's tampered with this device. And I'm like, tampered? You know, that's not the word I'd <laughs> right. use. I'm not like, I don't think anyone's tampered with it. And they went, did the screen ever break? Did you have an unauthorized Apple person? You know, did you have someone like an authorized person fix your phone or did the the Verizon do it did AT&T do it did Apple do it or did you just have some guy at your church you know <laughs> do it but and you know we're like uh oh you know and god can tell when an unauthorized source has tried to create identity for you so mm -hmm. your boyfriend's not a good source of identity your parents aren't even a good source of identity your th they can contribute they can lead us in the right direction, but the word, the word of God and the spirit of God are, are the places where we find identity. This, and we're in a cultural moment right now where everyone thinks that they can discover their identity. So people, you know, do whatever they got to do to, you know, I just got to discover myself. I got to find myself yeah, on TikTok. And uh, the reality is, no, you don't discover identity. You receive it from yeah. a place of trust. You go, God knows more about me than I know about myself. That's good. And so there are some things that he needs to reveal to me through his word and by his spirit um, so that I can actually walk in the power of who he created me to be. Yeah, and huge. it's a beautiful moment when huge. that that begins to happen. And huge. we don't arrive. We're always on the journey. Always on the to. journey. That's why it says renew your mind daily. And it's okay. Yeah. As long as you're headed. Yeah, how, do you, how, do you, how do you get where you want to be? You don't just get there immediately. You take a step in the right direction and you, and you take another step in the right direction and that's day by day this is the book a manny arango's brain washed uh available wherever you get books you can also go to mannyarango.com and read more about him link to the book and link to the armor courses which he'll explain here in a second but i want to let you get to your second major shift that allowed you to get unstuck and and move in a positive direction that you started to talk about go ahead yeah, the second major shift was gratitude. Um, gratitude is what led me to forgive my dad. Um, and and when I went, man, so sitting there with my therapist and he's he's, he's a nerd. He, Christian therapists are the best because they've got all this Bible 
You know, they know the <laughs> scriptures really well, but they know people really well. And uh, it's funny, like, you know, I'd been a pastor for a long time and I, I'm like, you're pastoring me, you know, you're using all the tricks that I use. You're using them <laughs> on me. You know, it's a great thing. And he said, um, you know, in the first century, I've, I've since I've, I've stolen this from my therapist, I've preached it uh, in the first century. Um, the one with the issue of blood, she she would have had 18 to 24 months max to live. Wow. Uh, with that kind of hemorrhaging, menstrual bleeding issue, she would not have been able to live for 12 years, but she did. And the miracle is not just that she got healed. The miracle is that she survived long enough to even be healed. That 12 years is an astronomically long time to live um, with this bleeding, menstrual hemorrhaging problem. It would be like the equivalent of someone with stage four cancer living for decades, you know? Um, and my son is making a whole lot of noise. I can't hear him. It's all good. <laughs> what he got himself into. <laughs> um, but I'm grateful for him. Yeah. And so uh, said that gratitude is not just praising God for the miracle that happens at the end, but real gratitude is saying, I shouldn't even be alive. And so often we bring a spirit of entitlement and that entitlement actually creates comparison. And then that creates a domino effect in our minds, mm -hmm. you know? So now we're in a debt because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses. And, and whereas if we go, man, how do I practice gratitude? I'm grateful for what I've got. I, th of course, there are things I wish I had. I wish I was healed. I wish this bleeding hemorrhaging thing wasn't a problem. But she approaches Jesus humbly and and the way she approaches Jesus actually determines what she ends up getting from him. And um, I remember going, okay, my dad took me to a crack house when I was five. It's hard to be grateful for that. Sure. But I'm going to get to a place internally where I can say thank you. And it is my thank you that led me to I forgive you. Mm. It was my thank you that led me to God made no mistakes. If he wanted me to be born to a pastor, he wanted me to be a PK, that's what would have happened. If he, God shows, and I'm not just thankful that my dad did, you know, wacky stuff. Well, I, I mean, I'm grateful are, are, that God are, saw it, are saw you, fit. Are you, thought, are you actually thankful for that or are you thankful for other things? In other words, you're not thankful for the sin. No, no. I'm grateful that even in spite of the foolish things that my dad did, that God, who didn't orchestrate it to happen, but God still used it and taught me valuable lessons. Like, you know, I remember one time my dad, you know, forgot to pick me up from school. I was in first grade. And uh, to this day, I don't remember that as a moment where I was abandoned. I remember that. I remember hearing the voice of the Lord that day. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I hadn't given my life to Jesus yet. But I remember distinctly hearing the Lord tell me that it was okay, that he was with me, you know? And and it's like Joseph. Joseph is not grateful that his brothers have sold him into slavery. Right, <laughs> right. He can just admit, you know, what you intended for evil, God used it for good. And I think if I can land the plane here, I'll say what we see Joseph do is he reframes the narrative so that he is not a victim. And, and so that his brothers are not villains. He reframes the narrative. And a lot of times we can't change the facts of what have happened. However, we can reframe the narrative of what happened. And it is the story you tell yourself that is going to circle back and bring you to the point of identity. The stories we tell ourselves are always rooted in who we believe we are. And so people tell stories, family stories, national stories, right? Whether it's the, thor the story of Thanksgiving is an American story. It, it helps to give uh, us meaning, no matter if we're African-American or Hispanic or, or white or Latino. It's like these are stories that unite us. And the stories we tell ourselves are always rooted in identity. And so uh, Joseph just refuses to recite a story that is going to make him the victim and his brothers the villain. Oh, yeah. And so... Um, reframing your story is probably the third thing that I really got from my therapist that was insane. He was like, I can't, we're not changing the facts. 
we're just reframing the narrative. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, identity, that identity is more powerful than insecurity. So yeah, it's good. putting your eggs in the basket of identity instead of focusing on insecurity. Uh, and then second, gratitude. Man, I, I can trust that God has ordered my steps and, and, and I can be grateful even for the negative stuff. And then third, I'm going to reframe the narrative. I'm in control of the story that I tell. Um, and I'm not going to be a victim. That I, I, I wish, I wish everyone just would get that. And, and I mean, a lot of people do, but so many of the issues that we have, I'm thinking of, you know, even people in my close circles, it's like, if you just, if you would just hit those three things <laughs> over yeah. and over identity, gratefulness, reframe the narrative it just because yeah. we 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 do we we react instead of acting and what you're talking about is taking control in a healthy way and and determining how you're going to view things how you're gonna how the outcome's gonna go yeah and and that's it's critical and we have the power to last did you ever struggle with the idea of that sounds great counselor but that I, I don't have the power to do that. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, I was, I was, I was, you know, seeing that therapist every week for about nine months. Okay. You know, who I was on month nine versus the person I walked in. When I walked in, when I walked into his office, I was, I was depressed. Mm. I was depressed. I don't even think I had language for being depressed at the time. Um, but I had I had been entertaining suicidal thoughts. I was depressed. Mm. I was low. I was numb. I I I could be in a worship service and everybody be crying, and I just felt nothing. I couldn't access my emotions. I remember the first day, he gave me a sheet of paper, a laminated sheet of paper, with all these feelings on it. Okay, because he asked me how you feeling, and I just didn't have any words for how I was even feeling. It was like caveman you know mm. like i don't know how i feel you know and he's handed me a laminate sheet of paper and he said well there's about 150 emotions on this you know they had emojis you yeah. know emojis with words you know yeah. and he said there's about 150 words here just pick just pick five and he said every week i'll hand this to you until you don't need it anymore and um man probably for the first two to three months i needed that laminated sheet of paper and and I just didn't even have words to describe. Hmm. I was numb. I was in a I was in a low place, hmm. and um, it took time. And and I think we, you know, what's the secret of compound interest? Time. You know, the longer you leave it in there, the better it is. Hmm. I think that we discount time. That you know, I could go to the I could go to the gym, you know, once a week, but it's maybe not going to do anything. But if I go for 15, 20 minutes every day, as long as I do it every day. Man, it, it it time escapes no man, like for the good or for the bad. And yeah. so um I just kept showing up. I just kept showing up. I just kept showing up. And um slowly but surely, I remember the first time I walked in and he said, You're smiling. Huh. And I was like, Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel <laughs> I feel better. And he went, You're you're you you're changing. And um you know, change change doesn't always feel like it's working. But I can tell you as somebody who is just in a really dark place, in a really low place, in a really confused place, in a disoriented place. I remember, you know, I'm 23, 24, 25, and I'm just disoriented and um, angry with my dad, disoriented with life. I felt stuck. I was in a low place. And... um and and I can tell you, a year from the day I decided to 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 really stick with it, um, things things were drastically different. Not perfect, yeah, but drastically different. Yeah, well, headed headed in the right direction. And I think it's good for people to hear uh, a few things. One that you were, well, obviously you were able to walk out of that darkness. But two that it took time to walk out. People need to know that it's okay. It's okay to yeah. be walking out of it. Three, it's <laughs> really good to get some help with someone else who can help walk beside you and guide you 
Those are all yeah. very healthy things. The last thing I want people to know is that there is hope. What do you, because I think you got to know there's hope to even take that first step. What hope can you offer people? Uh, that when God knit you together in your mother's womb, he had a plan and a purpose and that you're not an accident. Not only are you not an accident, but whatever it is that's going on right now in your life, God's not surprised. He's not been caught off guard. And it's the message of Christmas, right? We're right on the cusp of Christmas. And um, the message of Christmas is God is Emmanuel. He's the God who is with you. With us. That, that um, I, I've been watching Ted Lasso. And so I'm, I'm a little hooked. So I'm going to give you a little <laughs> Bible and a little bit of Ted Lasso. I love Ted Lasso. Uh, Randy, I feel like you're, you like Ted Lasso. I do. You watch Ted Lasso? Oh, oh, yeah, done. Yeah, been there. Yeah, I love it. So one of the things that Ted says, I can't remember season one or season two. I watched it all in about a six day period. So <laughs> the seasons kind of blur together for me. He said, uh, they had just lost this big game. And he said, we're, we're, we're here, we're here together. And he said, there's one thing worse than losing and it's losing by yourself. Hmm. He said, but we're all here together. Yeah. This is good Ted Lasso moment, but really Ted's echoing scripture. Yeah. I mean, God is like, I'm an ever, ever present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. That for the believer, there's something worse than being in a dark place or being in a negative place. It's being in a negative place by yourself. Isolated. And uh, yeah. the message of Christmas is that, man, that first Christmas is rough for Mary and Joseph. <laughs> Not ideal, um, but he's Emmanuel. He's the God that is with them. He's the God that is with us. He's the God incarnate. And uh, I think that gives hope. Yeah. So you got to keep walking. You got to keep walking. That, that gives hope to all of us wherever we're at because we're yeah. all dealing with something, maybe obviously not as extreme as where you came from uh, in most cases, but there's it's just life and that's it. And we need that hope and we need to hear it. And I appreciate you offering it today. Uh, you you want to check out Manny's website, mannyarango.com. It looks just like that. That's how you spell it, M-E-N-N-Y-A-R-A-N-G-O, if you're listening on the podcast.com. Uh, and also the book, wherever you get books, it's simply called Brain Washed. And it's about, it's a good kind of washing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the cleaning, the scrubbing, and getting the cobwebs out uh, and making it all shiny and new again. And then you do have hope when you when you do that scrubbing. Manny, thank you. Is there anything I missed before I let you go? Oh, oh hang on. No, that is amazing. Ar Armacourses.com, which you can link to the Armacourses on his website. Give him... Also, just as an aside, uh, if you want to, see, if you're in, if you're in the Dallas area, at Social Dallas, uh, Robert Manu's church, uh, Manny is. The yeah, yeah, that pastor. is the church that I'm currently serving at. I'm a teaching pastor at Social Dallas, and uh, super excited to be on the team. And uh, I create theological content, Bible content, at armacourses.com, and uh, there's a brainwashed e-course on armacourses.com, nice. and uh, you get the audio book, physical book, you get an e-course. Um, We'd love to have you a part of the ARMA community and uh, grab the book. I think it'll bless you. Yep. And if you know somebody that's like, you know, I think because like I, I like my my kids, uh, you're, I know you're older than my kids, but they would they probably listen to you more, better than they listen to me. So I'm, I'm like, go check out this, you know, right? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you know somebody that would benefit, uh, definitely let them know. ArmaCourses.com. You can also link to that from ManyArango.com. You'll see it at the top of the website there, man. Sure, appreciate you again doing this double conversation because uh, different audience than typically the broadcast uh, and a little looser format. We can have a little more fun. So appreciate I love you. It. I love it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys out there watching, listening, wherever you're at. If you haven't subscribed, followed, or liked, please do that uh, and utilize that share button and come back. More oh, great interviews right here on Life Today Live. We'll see you again next time. Some people get enthusiasm, they imagine it's the Holy Spirit. They want to live the way they want to live and have the Holy Spirit as a bit of uh, something extra. The Holy Spirit must be Lord.